I call that the changing nature of open source software. I'll cover, um, uh, it's a like, four, three, two, one uh, type of plan, uh, four rules that define open source, three uh, frameworks for open source software, two models that make open source work, and uh, one European open source organization. Uh, so the, the four rules that design op um, define open source, I'd like to remind these because this is really the definition of what we are, we're about. Uh, the first rule is uh, the freedom to use the software for whatever you want to do. At home, on a network, on a server, on the cloud, uh, in an office, whatever, for one user, for several users. And that's something you cannot do with proprietary software. The second rule is uh, the freedom to read the code uh, so that you understand how, it's work, how it works. Uh, and if you're a developer, you can learn from uh, those that have developed a successful software. And that, again, is something you cannot do with proprietary software. The third rule is uh, the freedom to share the software. Sharing the software like you would share a good book. And that's something you cannot do with proprietary software. And the fourth rule is the, uh, the freedom to redistribute modified copies of this software. Uh, meaning you can actually uh, uh, do business with it. You can resell the, uh, this software, modify it. And that's, again, something you cannot do with proprietary software. These four rules have had the power to change the software industry. Uh, we're not saying that open, uh, open source is killing proprietary software, but open source has made uh, broad inroads inside the, the industry, is uh, redefining uh, some uh, uh, the, of the rules of uh, competition in this sector, and, um, and we think that it's where the action is uh, uh, currently. Um, and, that's, and we're very proud to be part of this, uh, uh, of this part of the market. Now, uh, I need to go first. And let's go to the uh, three uh, frameworks for open source software that define open source software. When I say three frameworks, th let's think of three layers. Uh, I'd like to th some, I, I used to use to say three waves, but it's not three waves because three waves means a sequence. In fact, more it's the layers. It's an addition of uh, uh, something that adds. And, uh, and I'm thinking not of things, but of people and uh, uh, working environments. So the first one, uh, the first layer is the layer of the, we said the geeks. It's uh, um, uh, developer-driven open source. Uh, that's uh, what started open source 30 years ago when Richard Stallman sent that mail saying, I'm going to develop a new operating system. That was in September 83. Um, this is what we think of, what usually people think of when they think of uh, uh, open source, it's, I would call that the romantic view, but it's not just uh, something from the past, it's something that really exists today because uh, they, uh, this layers has, uh, has really given us uh, uh, some of the best uh, open source uh, project, I mean the Apache, uh, and today we can say that Android is drawing from this, uh, uh, from these layers and keeping all these uh, developers uh, uh, busy and, uh, and happy. I can also mention VLC because uh, I forgot to mention we have the, um, the VLC uh, main developer and lead, project lead uh, speaking this afternoon at this uh, conference and uh, VLC is a great success that uh, is really a representation of uh, that layer. So that's the first layer, and that's given us also the organizations like Apache and the uh, software licenses uh, with the open source initiative. But um, something happened towards uh, the mid-90s, uh, and free software uh, became commercial open source. And that's the open source that's driven by business and business opportunities. And uh, the free, uh, the availability of technologies and standards and uh, open components uh, has opened up great opportunities for startups, and there's been a bonanza of, star of startups that have uh, tried to enter every sector, every product category of enterprise computing. And of enterprise computing being representing something like uh, uh, two thirds of uh, the whole IT, uh, IT industry. So that's uh, quite significant. Uh, but we think of startups, but it's not only startups we need to have in mind, because when you look at this slide, what all these guys have in common? All these companies are huge companies. They, have, uh, they are known as proprietary companies. And they have invested billions of dollars uh, in protecting their intellectual property. And yet, and yet, these companies are also investing in open source. They are supporting open source communities. They are, are uh, uh, contributing to open source projects. And, uh, and even if you look at the, the one at the top right of this slide, uh, which is not an example uh, of uh, open source uh, company, well, they are really recognizing that open source is strategic. And one of their employees is the actual uh, president of uh, the Apache Foundation. 
So it means that even companies that are known for being uh, proprietary uh, recognize that open source is part of the industry and have a, a strategic vision of open source. For them, it's not just a way to share software, but it's also a way to build market share, to build market power, to invest in the future. And uh, so that's, I would say, the, the, that also is paving the, the way for the, uh, the third layer. The third layer appeared like uh, the turn of 2010 with something that happened that uh, we call cloud computing. It's something that emerged and uh, almost took uh, many of these companies by surprise. And cloud computing is not driven by small companies. It's driven by large companies, large, highly capitalistic, integrated companies that are non known for being uh, philanthropic. And, uh, and these companies have business models that, uh, if you look at the left side of the slide, business models and the business is based on open source, is run by open source uh, software, is enabled by open source technologies. So they, for them, it's vital. And some of these companies contribute back, some don't. Uh, we, and uh, it's, it depends what they want to do. And the key example is uh, Yahoo contributing Hadoop to the, uh, to, to the community. Why? Because some of these technologies are so broad, so vital, that they cannot keep, keep them for themselves. They want these companies, these technologies to be shared by everyone in order to give them uh, a, a staying power, to give them an inference power, so that this is good investment for the future. They don't want to invest in complex technologies that might be uh, uh, put aside by some uh, stronger competition. They want to make sure that they are center stage and that the technologies in which they involve will uh, sustain the business and they can keep evolving. So the best way to do that is to share the technology with the rest of the companies because they don't make actual money on these technologies. They don't keep the, the differentiation is based somewhere else. But those key enablers, they need them. So they create what we can call technology commons. And, uh, and they uh, engage with other companies in order to keep moving the technology forward. And that's, so if you look at the right side, so we have what we call, and that's very important because we need to, to keep this into consideration and be aware of that change. And that's what we call uh, 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 ecosystem-driven innovation. And open source is at the heart of this, uh, this way of uh, conducting innovation. And these, it takes the form of ecosystems or what we call collaborative projects. And collaborative projects is something that is very important for us. So uh, uh, an a few examples here. Hadoop is a key example of ecosystem, business ecosystems driving inno innovation forward. But now we can think of uh, Open Daylight. Open Daylight is something that has the status of a collaborative project within the Linux Foundation. And within the Linux Foundation, this is a collaborative project. We engage with the community of uh, vendors. Some of them are competitors. And these will uh, work together in order to define and develop uh, uh, new technologies. They call that a collaborative project. Another one can be Polarsis. Polarsis is the same thing, but that's within the Eclipse Foundation. OpenStack. OpenStack is a key example of a collaborative project that turned to uh, create its own foundation. Uh, within OW2, we have Open Cloudware that we were launching at uh, the OpenStack Summit uh, this week. It's another example of collaborative project. And we had Compatible One, and I can also mention Excel Cloud, and these are collaborative projects. A collaborative project is something that is driven by an ecosystem comprising of uh, research institutes, universities, end users, uh, IT vendors, systems integrators, anybody that can have the stake in the development of this technology. And that's where, uh, uh, that's how uh, IT innovation is happening essentially today. Why? Because it's very complex and not one company can uh, carry on single-handedly this uh, kind of innovation. So that's what I would, that's my third uh, layer. Uh, maybe I can call it, the first one was developer-driven open source. The second was probably business-driven open source or executive-driven open source, and maybe the committee-driven open source or ecosystem-driven open source. And that's the, the environment where we are. And, they, and all this works because we have this, those two uh, models, the famous uh, uh, open source models. One is the technology model that works because we know open source helps create good technologies uh, because by uh, having uh, uh, so many people working on a single project, the features uh, uh, get uh, better. Uh, we cover a broader uh, scope. Uh, we address more needs. Uh, there is an element of trust. Uh, open source 
because of these four uh, laws of freedoms means that uh, we work together in an environment um, uh, that is characterized by, uh, by trust, it has to be, or because it's somehow a little bit pre-competitive. So uh, we know there is, we better cooperate at this stage and maybe we can compete later. And then also there is uh, uh, this uh, quality thing because uh, when you develop open source software, you have to develop under the scrutiny of the others and you can't uh, deliver, uh, you can't hide something, you can hide uh, something under the carpet, everything is visible. Now the next model is uh, the one that is the business model. The question that uh, we get re uh, regularly is, but how do you make money with free software? There is a business model for open source. And it's, it's got three pillars. One is, First of all, that uh, you can sell services. That's very well known. You sell services around open source. The second, you can sell additional products. The third, third pillar is uh, that of uh, uh, like selling subscription. It's, I'll call that the insurance business model. And we know the uh, insurance business model is not such a bad model after all. That's the context where we are. And what we try to do at OW2, we try to be the one uh, global open source organization that looks at the IT world or the software industry from the European perspective. It's different from uh, the, the, the main um, organizations again, with which we compare ourselves, the Linux Foundation, the Eclipse Foundation, the Apache Foundation, the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, these are global. Uh, they really are uh, carried and pushed by uh, leaders uh, in the IT industry and those global leaders. Uh, we don't really have them. Uh, we don't have them all here in Europe, or we don't have none of them. And uh, we try to create this alternative and develop a, a, a platform, a neutral ground for our project and our, uh, our companies so that where well, we can decide by ourselves. So that's uh, what we do. And this is a slide I presented uh, two, three years ago uh, where we wanted to outline what was our strategy. And we are still executing on this strategy. So the first uh, wave was to position OW2 uh, in the, uh, where in somewhere in the infrastructure software level. Uh, so we do middleware, we do application platforms, and we uh, identified as early as 2009 that cloud computing was one way where we needed to really invest. So we invested in this area, and we are now invested in other areas, I will talk to that in the next slide. So this. Uh, first thing has helped us position uh, W2. We are visible, we are recognized as a community that creates good technology uh, for uh, cloud computing. When we say cloud computing, we don't say the OpenStack type of computing because this is in integration, execution, network storage. We think the games is almost done there and we don't want to compete against those leaders that are controlling this area. But what we can do, we can develop all the technologies uh, on top of that, that enable and that help create uh, uh, the new applications for cloud. And that's, that's where we're really good. Now the second uh, uh, endeavor was to uh, create quality for this, uh, for this software. So we, we established what we called our so the, uh, a quality program that we called a Software Quality Assurance and Trustworthiness. And that's what SQUAD stands for. Uh, the idea is to make sure that the code coming out of uh, uh, the OW2 code base is documented, is uh, uh, reliable, and trustworthy. So the idea is that um, users, system integrators, can download code from the OW2 code base with the same trust and the same confidence that they would have by getting code from any proprietary vendor. That's, that's what we want to do. And we, for this, we're developing uh, efforts and we're engaging with collaborative projects. And the third one, the third strategy is uh, that once we have a good position, good po uh, technology, uh, quality, now we can disseminate it and we can open up to the market and engage with uh, the, the mainstream market. We're not there yet, but we are we're really working on it. And we've the, we, we are uh, opening up and we will open up in 2015, uh, 2015, 2016, uh, the OW2 marketplace out there. And for, for to, to help us uh, develop this uh, strategy, we engage in collaborative projects, some of them uh, with our members. We engage in collaborative projects um, in cloud computing. Uh, you have some of them here. I've already mentioned uh, uh, Excel Cloud and Cloud One and One. Uh, for the quality, we've, we're engaged with a co um, collaborative project called Riscos that will uh, help us provide to our uh, users or visitors a decision support platform so they can understand and analyze what type of software they are dealing with when they look at the OW2 code base. 
and the third and for the third for the marketplace we've started with the ocean project which uh, uh, aimed at identifying all the cloud assets and cl open cloud components that have been developed in europe so they already are uh, available you can check the open cloud directory uh, that's uh, something you can see and uh, we have now won a new um, a new project uh, that we call App Hub that will allow us to deploy the uh, the marketplace I was mentioning. So we are all in, all in good shape uh, for for this. Uh, of course, it's taking it's taking longer than uh, than uh, uh, not than expected, but uh, we would like to go much much faster, of course. And um, uh, with this, we're also developing four initiatives. Uh, I remind you that uh, we have projects, that's an, an activity within OW2, and we also have something we call initiatives. An initiative is a joint effort by members of uh, the OW2 community uh, working together to push some of the projects or some of the technologies that are developed within OW2 towards the market or to address market segments. And we uh, have identified four, um, like four, uh, four main areas. Uh, that we think will constitute the backdrop of all our future um, IT applications. So these are uh, cloud computing, I've already talked about that. The second one is big data. So we have a big data initiative here that had uh, a workshop yesterday here. Um, the third one is the future internet, what the Europe called future internet, we can call it uh, internet of things or uh, the internet of pervasive applications. That's the second, that's the third, uh, uh, Element and the fourth one is something that we're working on that that we will be uh, work, We are in preparation of it and to we'll have a, uh, a Panel on, on the topic. It's an initiative on privacy and security and we think that with, with these four pillars cloud computing big data uh, pervasive application or incidents of future and uh, privacy and security we have uh, something that uh, from which all the the applications will, will draw, the new applications will draw resources from these areas. So these areas will be made available by, by the environment, uh, uh, um, online or in a way, and new applications will concentrate on the business, on the business process and, uh, on, or user needs and will somehow draw resources from, uh, from, from that. So that's a little bit of the, the, the I mean, a very quick overview of uh, where we stand. Um, and I would say that in, in this period, uh, now we are really uh, concentrating on this cooperative project uh, wave. Uh, we have startups and uh, some of the um, best known startups in the world in our community, and we are very proud of having them. Um, we also have a, a huge community. We have thousands of developers active on the forge, and it's our job at the OW2 management office to engage uh, OW2 into so in supporting some of these uh, collaborative projects. So that's all uh, for me. That's uh, uh, something we, we we try to do. I hope I've uh, uh, clarified a little bit uh, what we uh, what we try to do.